Hey guys, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. So jumping straight in with my reading update where I'm at so far with books. Still reading the book that I started right at the end of last week's vlog but I didn't tell you much about it because I was just wrapping that up and at the point that I was in the book I couldn't really tell you too much. I still wasn't sure what it was about. And that book is Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. This is the first book in the His Dark Material series. There has just been, well it's still ongoing, there's a BBC adaptation currently running of this. I watched the first episode this evening. I've never I've never read this book before but I was at a point or I am now at a point where I can sort of start the show without spoiling the book for myself because the show the first episode didn't go as far as where I'm up to so I'm on page 182 of this I'm reading this for the Believeathon. this is not on my Bookopoly TBR and for the Believeathon, this fulfills a prompt to read a seasonal book so I'm absolutely loving this book I'm like I said 180 pages in so I've read almost 120 pages of this today I just can't get enough of it and I think that this may be my favorite book of the Believeathon so far so when I wrapped up last week's vlog I didn't know too much what this was about so I couldn't really tell you guys guys but this follows a young girl called Lyra and Lyra is an orphan her parents were killed in an airship crash and she's under the care of her uncle but her uncle has given her to a prestigious college in Oxford for them to look after her because her uncle is an explorer so he isn't around very often. Now Lyra is very tenacious, she's probably a Gryffindor and all she wants is to go and explore the north with her uncle but he keeps telling her that she can't go because it's not safe and she has to stay at the college which understandably she's a child I mean I get it but she essentially just wants more for her life she wants adventure now one day she is exploring the college and she comes across this room that she's not supposed to be in and she sees the master of the college poisoning the wine that her uncle is about to drink because her uncle has just come back off an expedition her uncle comes into the room and she warns him that he's about to be poisoned and he tells her to hide and pay attention to the presentation that he's about to give and watch the master and see what's going on there while she's there she she sees the presentation which is about a substance called dust and it has something to do with the northern lights the aurora borealis and all that stuff i'm not really sure where this story is going still to this point with the dust and stuff it's very science based surprisingly but the plot is somehow central to this dust and what's going on there I don't really understand that. In the background of this we do have this group of people who are referred to as the gobblers who are kidnapping children for nefarious purposes. Nobody knows who they are or why they are kidnapping these children. Now one day Lyra is invited to this dinner at the college and there is a woman there called Mrs Coulter and Mrs Coulter invites Lyra to live with her and to be her assistant. Now Lyra having grown up around male scholars and understanding their disdain for female scholars wouldn't normally be too keen on this she doesn't want to leave the college unless she is going north with her uncle but there is something very charismatic about Mrs Coulter who is young and beautiful and seems very interested in Lyra however there is a possibility that Mrs Coulter is not as nice as she seems to be and this gives Lyra cause for concern and I'll kind of I'll leave it there. So I'm absolutely loving this book so far. The writing style is a lot more complex than I expected. This is giving me Harry Potter vibes, not in the plot in any way, but in the way that it's written that kind of transcends all age barriers. So I am thoroughly enjoying this as an adult, even though it is kind of a children's book. I would say that this is for older children, bordering on like young adult adventure story, because this does not read like a children's book and it definitely has a lot of complexity. I feel like this would more be a book that you read to children as opposed to children reading on their own unless they are probably at least 10. See I say this all the time about like the ages that children should read books but the thing about me is that I don't want to have children and one of the reasons probably is because I'm not familiar with children. I was an only child, there's no other children in my family, there's nobody younger than me. I have no experience with 
children but this just is pretty complex it has a really interesting plot i love where it's going it is a children's book so it is suitable for children but it's just it's the most complex one that i've read so far and i'm absolutely loving the story it's riveting and i can't get enough so i do expect to finish this very very soon i'm going to go to bed soon and read another chapter it is around 11 p.m i have just been editing last week's vlog i've got a bit stuck because i wanted to import the nevernight trailer footage onto the screen and the file needs converting so that it'll go into my editor so i got to figure out how to do that but i do kind of want to finish editing this clip and then i'm going to go to bed and i'll finish up my editing tomorrow night speaking of computers in last week's vlog i did allude to the fact that i set up crowdfunder and i said that i would say a little bit more about it today so i don't want to go into it too much because all of the information is in the crowdfunder link which is in my description box and will be in the description box of all of my videos up until i close it either in december or january but essentially if you saw last week's vlog, you will know that my computer is not doing so well at the moment. I have a laptop, it's not great, the screen is washed out, all of the ports are broken, like you can't, if you insert anything into any of the ports, you cannot knock them, otherwise they will disconnect. When I'm trying to transfer files from my camera, I have to keep inserting, removing, inserting my SD card until it registers that it's there. The processing is very slow on it. It's taking me 12 hours to render a vlog, like nine to 12 hours, depending on how long and how many things are in the vlog. And it's gotten to the point now, like when it is exporting my vlogs, I can't really open any other folders. Sometimes if I try and open up like the file transfers to get things off my SD card, it'll just freeze and I have to wait for ages. And it's essentially just a basic laptop. It was a good basic laptop when it was bought four years ago, but it's not a laptop that can support or should support video editing, photo editing, and the amount of stuff that I put through it. So that is on its last legs, and I have started a crowdfunder to contribute to the purchase of an iMac. Macs are known for being the best for video editing, photo editing, and any creative pursuits, but they are very, very expensive. So I have started a crowdfunder kind of as an alternative to gifting off my Amazon wish list over the Christmas period. If if you would like to contribute to this big piece of equipment that's going to be really useful to my channel and help me with putting out more content for you guys so i'm trying to get back to my normal schedule and i'm just really struggling with the editing process right now so yeah the link to that is in my description box if you do wish to donate please do not feel obligated i don't want anybody to feel like they have to do this essentially i don't have a patreon because i don't want to put any restrictions on my content i want you guys to have access to all of my content and i don't want to put any barriers on any of that so this is kind of like a one time alternative to a patreon if you do want to support my channel if you do want to help me upgrade this piece of equipment then you do have the option to do that i will be eternally grateful and you guys will see the results in my videos and the efficiency with which i'll be able to get them out and also i'm thinking of upgrading my editing software as well which will give me the ability to add like cool effects to my vlogs and stuff and make my videos look a little bit better hopefully that's what i'm hoping obviously I don't have the editing software yet but the one that I'm looking at is a little bit better like I have a good editing software I paid for editing software but the one that I'm looking at is a little bit more upmarket than that so that's all of the information on that I don't want to be going on about it all the time because as I said I don't want you guys to feel pressured but the option is there if you would like to donate and I will be eternally grateful so as I'm only reading one book at the moment, I think that's pretty much all I have to say to you guys right now, which I know I've been talking for 10 minutes uh, so far, but it doesn't feel like that. It feels like a very quick update. So I'm gonna go try and get that last clip edited before I go to bed. Tomorrow, I don't know if I'll do a vlog update because I have to go to my dad's after work. I have loads of candles to make, so many candles. And I'm also going to have to finish that vlog to get it up for Wednesday. When you see this, I'm hoping that this vlog, the one that I'm recording right now, will go up on Tuesday. And then I'm hoping to get back to a normal video schedule. It's a little bit easier for me to do that at the end slash beginning of months because the content that I put out at the end and beginning of months is the standard stuff. Like I have a haul come in and then my TBR, my wrap up. So I'm going to use that week where those videos go up to kind of get me back into a regular editing schedule. As you saw last week, I gave you a tour of the reading 
changing room. Everything's a little bit calmer here now. There's still things that need unpacking, but we have two livable rooms, three livable rooms, because we did the kitchen as well. So the entire downstairs is now a livable space, which means that I should have a little bit more time to get back into my normal routine. And I'm excited about that because I have been missing making my core content, like normal videos. And I'm just really excited for things to get back to normal a little bit. So that is all I have right now. I'll be back maybe not tomorrow, but probably definitely Wednesday because I'm almost halfway through this and I only started it. Saturday night technically, but I only read one chapter. So yeah, I'll check in with you guys probably when I finish this, unless anything else pops up. So yesterday I received a parcel that I'm gonna unbox for you guys. Um, I, I don't have it on screen right now because I'm not sure if it'll fit. But um, this this is my parcel that I'm gonna unbox right here, right now. This is a thing that has been sent to me for review. Um, I think this may be by far the weirdest thing I've been requested to review. Not weird as in the item is weird, it's just feels weird that I have been asked to review it kind of thing. But you know, I have just moved house and it is somewhat related to reading and I'm actually really excited about this. So in this box, as let me just move some stuff so I can get in this box, we have a lamp. Now the lamp is from a company called BenQ. They reached out to me and asked me to review a lamp that they have. Now, I believe, I don't understand how because I'm not scientifically minded at all, but these have been designed for people who have a lot of screen time. So look at the phones a lot, watch a lot of television on LED screens, always on the computer, using an e-reader. And they are designed to provide sufficient lighting so that when you are doing things, you're not straining your eyes. Now, oh, she is big. So I'll get this out of the outer packaging. Oh my God. Can't do it. Here we go. Ooh, oh, she heavy too. Here is the lamp. It has this curved light on it. I believe all of these are LEDs. And like, if you have it over a desk, it means that you have no dark spaces because the light kind of bounces outwards and gives you like a really brightly lit area and as well as that as it shows here it is good to put over your electronic devices to reduce your eye strain when you're using them as somebody who wears glasses i mean i think you guys know i wear glasses even though i don't really wear them in my videos eye strain is a real thing i mean i have blue light filters on mine and things like that but um i get a lot of headaches possibly because of lighting and all the time i spend on tech i've just moved house a lamp is something i could use so I was happy to review this. Some of the other features I think of this is that it has a dimmable switch. I think it does also have like options. Can't do this. I think it has options on the color that you can have it. So that you can have it set to warm light or cold light, which is good because blue light is good for being able to see things if you're working on like say art or something like that. But um, warm light is better for ambiance as you can see. I'm a warm light gal, but my desk lamp is a daylight bulb. Wow, okay. So I'll show you the box of what I can of the box. And here we go. I think this is the base. This is the lamp. We have a couple of manuals here, which I've never had a manual with a lamp before, but then I've never had a lamp as fancy as this before. So, oh yes, they sent me the gold one, which is perfect. So that is the lamp and the arm, and it has a fabric called. Let's just put that down with a brick underneath in. And then we also have the stand. The stand's the heavy part. Ooh, wow, she heavy. That is a heavy, heavy stand. This is the power lead, and it also comes with all the different adapters for the different countries. So no matter where you live, you can have one of these. So this is actually, <laughs> 
I thought the sand was gonna be in more parts than this. So I'm, I'm confident now that I can assemble this by myself. So the price on this lamp, as I said, it's a fancy ass lamp and the price is a little bit hefty. I believe that it's $189, which I think is just over 150 pounds, maybe 160-ish pounds. But these are available on their website and also on Amazon. I will include a link down below for both Amazon and their website so that you can check them out if you want to. This bit is the um, the actual light bit and this is a lot thinner than I expected it to be. I thought it was gonna be really wide and chunky. So I'm intrigued about this. Glad that it's gold because I think I'm actually gonna replace that big lamp in the corner. This is so heavy. I mean, I guess this has to be because this lamp has quite a long arm on it. So you need the base to weigh it down so it doesn't tip over. And it says, don't drop it on your foot essentially, which I'll try not to. You all are gonna have to give me a hot minute to be a dumb bitch. Okay, so I'm just gonna go grab a little screwdriver. Okay, so while I was gone for a second, I have screwed the light onto the base and I also plugged it into the wall so the lighting might be a bit different because I turned my um, fairy lights off. But yeah, I don't know how to work this. Should I look at these? Okay, right, well, this is gonna be interesting, guys. Are we ready? I don't know, should I turn this off? Let me just adjust the lighting a bit. That's a bit better. Right, so I have my quick start guide and it says touch the metal ring, which is this thing, to turn the light on, which, um, okay. Wow. Touch and hold the metal ring to enter eye care mode. And this little green light on here indicates that eye care mode is on. Don't know what the difference is. Turn the knob to adjust the brightness. So at the lowest we have, and then the brightest, which is pretty damn bright. Ooh, wow. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't have done that. Wow. Ooh, there we go. And press and turn the knob to adjust color temperature. And there's the blue light. Okay, so this is hella fucking fancy. Oh my god. Wow. Can you guys see that? Yeah. That is crazy. So let me just pop this back on. There we go. We are back in our normal lighting situation. Oh, this is for screen reading. It says position the lamp head in front of the screen. Center of the light source should be aligned with the center of the screen and both ends of the curved light should be equal in height. The lamp head should be positioned as far away from the screen frame as possible in order to avoid reflected glare. If the lamp head is higher than your eyes, please tilt the lamp head slightly towards the back of the screen to avoid looking directly into the light. So it does, it is on a ball joint as well, so it tilts this way. Ooh, I don't know what I'm doing there. Um, let's just turn that off a second. Oh, this is for paper reading. Align the center of the light source with the center of your eyes and ensure that both ends of the curved light source are equal in height. Adjust the lamp head so that it is slightly lower than your eyes. Otherwise, please tilt the lamp head slightly forward to avoid looking directly into the light. So yeah, I'm really impressed with this. Thank you so much, Katie. And thank you for sending this over to me. I appreciate it and I'm sure I will get some use out of this. I'm not sure where I'm putting it yet. I might put it in the living room because it is like a short desk lamp, but I need an end table to put it on. But it would be good for me to read in there. Or alternatively to that, I could put it on my desk. We'll see. We'll see where it's going. I might try it out in some new places, but I will definitely let you guys know how I get on with this. This is one hell of a fancy lamp, and I don't know what I did to deserve this, but um, yeah, I appreciate it. This is great. This is, I love this. I love it. So aside from the lamp, let's move that over. I'll give you a very brief reading update. Where's my book? It's over here. Um, because I am going to go and get in the bath soon. Like, as soon as I've finished doing this, I'm gonna go get a bath. So I am on page 342 of, wow, I'm so close to the end, 397 of Northern Lights. So I'm gonna go get in the bath. I'm gonna finish this. I won't tell you any of my thoughts now because I'll be done with it really soon. But yeah, I have 55 pages left and I'm gonna go read them in the bath.
Hey guys, so it has been a couple of days. It is currently midnight. Oops. It's currently midnight on Friday night. I have made myself a coffee and if that does not tell you how today and the last couple of days have gone, then pretty much nothing will. So I'm getting ready to film a video now at midnight. I thought I'd come in and check in now because I haven't for a couple of days and I actually have things to tell you. And as well as that, I find that if I film something else before I film a video, then my video turns out a lot better because I kind of have like a warm-up period, I guess. We're going to talk about the book that I finished because I did finish Northern Lights two nights ago, just never bothered to check in. And there's a couple of other things as well. I feel like while I'm here before I start with my normal update I should let you know that the Imposia blankets. I wonder if I can give you like a better overview now. I probably can. Yeah here we go. So um I still, I still don't think I can can I? Um so these hooded blankets are now back in stock when you're watching this video. I think they're going to be available until the 2nd of December. I will link all the Imposia stuff down below. But if you would like to get yourself a hooded blanket then I do have two discount codes for you guys. I believe that the first one is Becca1 and that will get you a 10% discount off a blanket. And my second code is Becca2 which will get you 25% off if you order two blankets which works out as an equivalent of buy one get one half price which is a pretty sweet deal. I'm actually actually going to be taking advantage of it and I'm going to be buying a couple of these to give to people for Christmas. Honestly would highly recommend. I've never done that before. I've never ever used my own rep code to buy something for myself or other people and I am with these blankets which just pretty much sums up how much I love these blankets. They're so cozy. They're so warm. So they're a little bit too warm actually right now. I need to film my book haul in this and I'm just a little bit hot. So today or yesterday I guess because I pretty sure it's past midnight at this point, was Curtis and I's four year anniversary, which it has been a wild year. I mean, we bought a house, we went on, we went to Rome, which was our second holiday ever. I think that's pretty much it for our relationship achievements, but I know that I personally have achieved a lot this year and 2019 has pretty much been my best year ever, which, um, not to bring the tone down a little bit, but if you guys know my mum passed away last year and having my best year ever in 2019 is not not great when the one person I want to share my achievements with isn't around to see them. So it's it's really weird because I've had my best year ever, but I don't feel that great about it because of like the grief stuff, which I didn't really need to tell you guys that wasn't relevant right now. But yeah, it came up. So back to the good stuff, anniversary. Curtis got me two gifts. We're not doing like big stuff at all this year across all of the holidays. So Curtis and I won't be buying each other a lot for Christmas just because we have the house and all of our excess money is kind of going into furniture and stuff. So um, he got me two things. The first thing is something he buys me every year for our anniversary and that is my 2020 happy planner. So you guys may have seen, I think it was last week's vlog or the week before. I do plan. I haven't used my planner a lot this year because I've been kind of busy and like I said, it's, it's, midnight now and I'm getting around to filming a vlog update and then I have to film a full video but I do want to get more into planning. I have lots of plans for candle releases in 2020 and the thing with me is that I'm really last minute like I made a prototype for a candle to be a Christmas exclusive and it's now the end of November and I haven't designed the label for that so I am going to repurpose it into something that I think I'll be releasing in February like same scent same colour just not Christmas themed. So I want to kind of be writing down releases I have planned for months and making a note to plan my Christmas stuff in October and plan Halloween stuff in like August so that I'm actually prepared for these things and I have more products to offer you guys. So I absolutely love Happy Planner. I've been considering doing plan with me videos but I don't know how to because I plan as I go along like I'm going to go and go through this and add in all the dates and stuff that I need to remember no. The only people's plan with me is that I've watched apart from general planner people, like planner channels, is Ali from Hardback Quarters and she kind of writes everything down on a piece of paper and then does a plan with me video and writes everything in. But I don't know. Do you want plan with me videos? Is that something that it's worth me doing? Do you want to see me do it? Because there's so much planner content out there I don't think you need it from me. But because I do plan and I have a happy planner, 
let me know and the second thing he got me was kind of also themed um he doesn't buy me this every year although he kind of does buy something in this theme every year and this will be in my book haul so i'm not going to talk about it too much but he got me the a Court of thorns and roses collector's edition by sarah j mass obviously which is absolutely beautiful it also has this ribbon that when you pull on it the book slides out and it has this stunning artwork on it and my favorite thing about this and also the throne of glass one that i have is the redesigned mat which is just beautiful so yeah he got me those gifts which i'm eternally grateful like i said this isn't a tradition but it does kind of follow a theme he does tend to buy me any sarah j mass stuff that's out because sarah j mass tends to release in november and also in may and it's my birthday in may and november is our anniversary so he tends to buy me all of the sarah j mass stuff <sighs> coffee i haven't had a coffee today that is so good um while we're on the theme of hauls once again i'm about to film a haul so i won't go through this too detailed there's a really good secondhand bookshop around the corner from work but i never have time to go to it because it's only open 10 till 3 30 and i'm in work across that time but on my lunch break on a whim i decided to go in and they actually had two books that i wanted which um they they do have an okay fantasy section but an example of the things that they have in is like they had the eighth book in the wheel of time series which i'm not gonna buy <laughs> because i need to read book one but I picked up two things. The first one is Dragonflight by Anne McCaffrey. This is the first book in the Chronicle of the Dragons of Pern. This is a classic adult fantasy series. This is the first book that she published. There are two ways of reading this series. You can read it in publication order, which is the order that Anne McCaffrey recommends that you read it in, or you can read it in chronological order, which I believe is kind of impossible because some books span long periods of time and other books and series are in a short period of time. But there is like a reading order where you can kind of read it chronologically. I'm gonna go publication order because this is the only book by her I have. And yeah, it's about dragons. And the second one I got was The Sword of Destiny by Ange Sapokovsky. And this is the, it's not the second book in the Witcher series, but in reading order, it is the second book. It's a collection of short stories. I read the first book, I got it from my library didn't love it but I am kind of persevering because I, I don't like short stories in general you guys know this I'm persevering to get to the core books in the series to see if I enjoy those any more than the short stories so wow I've been talking for nine minutes and I haven't even got to a reading update yet fucking hell am I starting to feel better the more caffeinated I get I can't tell you, I need more coffee before I find out the answer to that question. So, reading update. As I told you, I was just about to finish Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. I did finish this. I really enjoyed this. There were aspects of it that I didn't love. Pacing is a little bit weird because there's three parts in this book and towards the end of the second part we have a climax and it very much feels like the end of the book like the big end of the book conflict scene kind of thing but it isn't and then we have the entirety of part three and it kind of just like repeats that sequence um i gave this five stars because i did really love it and this was my belief on book to read a seasonal book i love the complexity of this i love that it isn't just a children's book it's definitely a book that spans all age ranges somebody did comment on last week's vlog actually and say that philip pullman hasn't given an age range for this and it's something that if you read it when you're younger you'll take something out of it but if you read it when you're older you'll get something else out of it which i definitely really liked about this and yeah I'm excited to continue. I believe a lot of people don't like the last book in the series, so we'll see how I feel about that. But I just, I really love the writing style and the atmosphere of this. I am also currently up to date on the TV show of this now, and <sighs> guys, I don't like the show. <laughs> so I don't want to dwell on it too much, but I don't like the BBC in general as a company. I don't like what they do um, and what they stand for and their whole policy. They're kind of, um, I just really don't like the BBC. I also don't like British television. I don't like the cinematography or the direction style in his dark materials. There's a lot of shots with shaky cam, which is, it's not quite as documentary style as things like Modern Family is. And The Office, I don't like The Office because I don't like documentary style TV shows when they're not documentaries. Yeah, I don't like, that about it there are parts where you can tell that the special effects aren't good like there's one bit where mrs coulter walks into a hall in the jordan college and you can see the sunlight through the windows and it's supposed to look like a certain way like artsy and aesthetic but it just looks like a spotlight shining through a window which is what it is and yeah you can tell when shots are set in miniature and you can tell that it's a set and it doesn't feel like a room 
and I don't like how modern it is. I also don't like that it has spoilers for book two in the first season and it doesn't even make sense in the context of the show. Like I've read the first book and I still don't know what some of those scenes are about. So I'm not a huge fan of the show but I will continue watching it just because I've started it now. So yeah, there's that. I did pick up another book and I am a little bit into it. I'm pretty, I'm doing well actually. I'm further than it says. Okay, so I'm 114 pages into this book. Just need to move my bookmark. There's drunk people outside. Great. Just I live in a tiny town, you would not expect drunk people, but there you have it. So the book that I started is The Mime Order by Samantha Shannon. This is the second book in the Bone Season series by Samantha Shannon. And I'm reading this because I am one of the co-hosts for the Bonathon, which is a read-along where we're reading one book in this series every month. We've already read the Bone Season, obviously, and done the live show for that. I'll link it down below. I don't think we have a date for the live show of this yet, but it will be early December, I believe. But this is a series that spans many genres. This is on my Bookopoly TBR to read a paranormal book because it has paranormal elements, even though I wouldn't say that's the predominant genre. But in the first book in this series, we follow a girl called Paige, who is the Molisher for an underground crime gang in a dystopian London. So in this world, it is illegal to be clairvoyant. And as you guessed it, our main character is a clairvoyant and all of the clairvoyants band together in these crime gangs to support each other and survive, I guess. Now, one day when Paige is on her way home on the train, her powers are discovered because she reacts in self-defense to a guard on the train who is on there looking for clairvoyance and she reveals her power. She is then captured and taken away. She thinks that she is going to be sentenced to death, but she isn't, and that is pretty much all I'm going to say about this. The first book very much centers on the place that she is taken when she's captured. The second book focuses a lot more on London and the crime gangs and the politics, and you have things in this series called Mime Lords, who are the leaders of the individual crime gangs and sections of London. They all respond to like an, is he called the Underlord? The Underking? The Underlord, I think. And it is about the corruption in the system. I know, corruption in a system of criminals. Wow, right? But it is all about corruption and Paige trying to do the right thing and kind of save the world and I guess upset the equilibrium of these crime gangs. I'm 114 pages in, I'm really loving it. I did have some issues with the Bone Season when I was rereading it just because I thought that the writing wasn't great. It has a lot of telling and not showing in it but I mean I was fine with that because I have read all of the books that are published in this series before and I know that Samantha Shannon's writing gets continually better because I've read everything that she's published so far. So yeah I was completely fine with that. It was just something that I picked up on. I also really like the romance elements in this series even though I'm not sure how present they are throughout the series as a whole to be fair like it's not super present in the first book and um, I know it does pick up again at some point but I can't remember when but I'm excited for that because I do like the romance and one of the things that I think Samantha Shannon is very good at is writing a really compelling story. These books are super addictive. I find them like super easy to fly through. And the thing about this is that they're really dense in the politics and the world building and the systems that we have going on and the not magic system because it's clairvoyancy. So is it? magic. I, I don't know where the line is there but yeah that whole kind of like magic system and things like that. It's super complex but it's just super compelling to read and even now 114 pages in not a lot has happened but I still just can't stop reading it. So I'm excited to be carrying on with this. I did want it finished by the end of this weekend but um I'm going shopping in York tomorrow. I'm going to do a bit of Christmas shopping and Curtis and I didn't do really do anything for our anniversary today so we're going to go into York and do some shopping. I guess we'll see how much I can get Red. So that is all I have for you right now. I'm gonna go film my haul, which I didn't do a haul last month because you guys know I didn't post as much last month and now I have a lot of books to haul and we're probably going on for around like 12, 15, 12, 30 now. So that's gonna be fun. I suppose I better go crack on with that so that I can go to bed sometime soon.
Hey guys, it is now 10 p.m. Got back from York at about six and I've spent pretty much all of that time since I got home editing my book haul, which is now bought in and hopefully will be up tomorrow, providing my internet is kind to me, which who knows. Bit of a reading update, I don't have one. I've read 10, well, I've read maybe 13 pages today. Nothing really worth telling you guys about. Let me just rearrange a little bit, I'm not comfortable. But the main reason that I'm here today is that I, when I went to lock the front door to make sure that the front door was locked last night, I found a card from the post office on the floor that I hadn't seen when I came in because I think Curtis came in before me last night but there was a card from the post office on the floor that said that I'd had three parcels attempted to be delivered yesterday that had been sent to the sorting office and then not long after I'd woke up about 20 minutes half an hour after I'd woken up there was a knock on the door and the postman delivered another parcel so I went to collect them and we have three Amazon parcels here. I don't think I've ordered anything. I don't think. This is the thing, especially because we're coming up to Christmas, it's going to get to the point where I'm going to be doing these unboxings for you and I'm not going to have any clue what's off my wish list and what is actually gifts that I've bought for people. So that's going to be fun. But um, there was a fourth parcel because there's only three here and the fourth one was my October. No. The fourth one was my November Owl Crate, which I will obviously do a separate unboxing for. But I am assuming that these are wish list items. So thank you in advance whoever sent me these, providing they are wishlist items that I haven't just gone crazy and been ordering stuff. So um, yeah, let's see what's in them. I'm going to start with these two because this, once again, is a really big box to put a book in, but it is also really light. So let's see what we got. So the first one, this one is kind of light. I would hazard a guess at a paperback. We shall see. Can't get my finger under it. Okay, so it is gift wrapped. No note in there. Is there a note in here? I hope that I'm actually going to get notes with all of my things this year. So that is the invoice, not the gift note. Is there a note in here? There is. Okay, so I do actually have a note with this one, which is always a great start. So I like to do the note last. I don't know why. I think everybody else seems to do the note first, but I like to save it till last. So let's see. What we got, this is a cute little bag like this one. Oh my God, who gifted this to me? I have been excited about this for the longest time. I forgot, I didn't even realize I put this on my wish list. But I have, I want to eat your pancreas, the complete manga collection by Yoru Simino and Idumi Kirahara. So this is a manga, as you may be able to tell. And as you guys know, I recently read and absolutely fell in love with Orange this year. What surprised me the most about that is that I seem to prefer contemporary manga to fantasy manga. So this is one, I can't remember whose channel, I saw this on but it has a very bizarre name as it's called I want to eat your pancreas but I think this is about a girl who has pancreatic cancer and she befriends a boy and I'm not sure does she make him okay there is a boy who steals this girl's cancer and who steals this girl's cancer who steals this girl's cancer and he finds out that she's got pancreatic cancer. They're not friends and he doesn't know her, but he now feels obligated to spend time with her because she's sick, but he actually ends up enjoying her company, I assume. So I'm really, oh, I'm really excited for this. It seems so cute. Who sent me this? Who sent me this? What the fuck even is this, my dude? Please read it soon so I know whether or not I should read it. Honestly, you make my gray skies blue and I wanted to give you something back. Lots of love from Kelsey. Thank you so much, Kelsey. Hopefully you are watching this vlog and you just saw me explain what this is about but yeah it's um it has a terrifying name and a really weird name but I promise the story is supposed to be like hard hitting and heartwarming and cute so yeah at first when I read what the fuck is this my dude I thought I thought it was Cody and I was like Cody why but, um, it's not it's not Cody so this one is more solid and this one feels like a hardback <gasps> Who sent me this? This also has a note in it, okay. So this one is Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nyan. Another East Asian inspired fantasy. I'm saying another, it's because I just filmed my book haul yesterday where I hold Spin the Dawn and also Wicked Fox. But this is the sequel to Girls of Paper and Fire, which is a story about a girl who is stolen from her home and forced to be one of the paper girls who are concubines who have to form 
like courtesan services for the king but the king is a demon king and there's like three castes in that world you have the highest ranking class which are demons and they're animalistic so the king i think the king is a bull and they have a lot of animal features and then you have the middle caste who are human like but have a few animal features like some will have like cat ears and things like that and then you have the paper caste who are humans so this is, like, I was looking at this in Waterstones today and I thought, should I just buy it? Because it has been specially ordered because I know that this isn't, like, a mainstream hardback release in the UK. So I was like, should I just get this? And I'm glad, I'm glad that I didn't. The main reason I didn't is because I thought it was on my wish list and coming up to Christmas, I was like, well, we'll see because I'm not in a huge hurry to read this. But I am really, really excited to read this because I gave the first book four stars. Oh, also the plot of this, it has a female female romance in it as well which is one of the things that's so cool about it the place that the first book leaves off is in a very different place to the rest of the story and i'm kind of intrigued as to where the rest of the plot's going to go there was a lot that i liked about the first book but i thought there were quite a few things lacking so i'm interested to see where this goes and how it developed but um <laughs> let's see who sent me this one kimberly glass Enjoy your gifts, love your YouTube channel, keep doing what you are doing. Here are a couple of gifts from me to you, Kimberly Glass. Thank you so much, Kimberly, for this. A great choice. You chose very well because this is one that I, I wasn't in like a huge, like enormous hurry, like, oh my god, I have to read this right now. But it is one that I wanted to read because I did read and enjoy the first book. So thank you, Kimberly and Kelsey, for these. Let me just pop this in the front cover and the last one which is this i actually remembered because i forgot when i was saying i don't know what this is i do have a couple of funko pops on my wish list, but nobody's ever bought me one so yes who got me this yeah it is a funko pop it is nick from new girl i love new girl new girl is one of my favorite shows of all time which is saying a lot because i'm not a huge sitcom person but i just think new girl is so so funny so thank you very much nick is is nick my favorite character he might be the thing with new girl is that i love them all equally like nick jess schmidt and winston i absolutely love all of them so i don't really have a favorite character because i love them all for different reasons but i do i do love nick a lot so thank you for this kimberly again thank you so much kimberly so kimberly has just gifted me girls of storm oops girls of storm and shadow and a nick funko so thank you kimberly and once again thank you kelsey for this i've been spoiled today guys it feels like christmas and i have just actually filmed a video in york which you will see soon but that was quite an exciting video as well i went out into the world and i filmed which was new for me i've tried to do it before and i failed so i'm not sure how that video is going to come together but i hope it's good but thank you so much guys for these beautiful wonderful presents i honestly feel so spoiled right now oh so um I'm going to go, guys, guys, I have 56, 56 or 55 currently outstanding candle orders. I have never, ever, ever had that many. The most I think I've had outstanding at once may be around 20 or 25. And I am a little bit panicky about getting all of these out because obviously I have my deadline. My deadline to get candles out is two weeks. My dispatch time is one to two weeks. I have more of a deadline now because occasionally, very occasionally, there will be an order that will run over that dispatch time. And that is if one of my suppliers is waiting on stock to then send on to me, which happens occasionally with fragrance oil because some of my fragrance oils are US imports. But I actually have a deadline because Christmas. So I'm panicking about that a little bit. So I'm going to go and dispatch as many orders as I can tonight because I can't proceed. I can't keep making candles because I have so many orders that I don't know where I'm up to. I know for a fact that I definitely need to order fragrance oils and I would like to get an order in tonight. But to be able to do that, I need to kind of see where I'm up to, see what I need and how much of stuff I need. But to be able to do that, I need to dispatch a ton of orders so I can figure out where I'm up to and what I'm doing. So yeah, I'm gonna um 
I'm gonna go crack on with that. I may be up till the early hours again, but I don't have to get up for anything tomorrow. Tomorrow, hopefully, I need to clean this room and put everything back together because everything's a little bit of a mess after I filmed last night. So tomorrow is going to be tidying candles and reading, hopefully, and editing a little bit of my vlog. I'll let you know how it goes if I spiral into a mad panic or like have a mental breakdown. It's because life, candles, stress. Ah. Hey guys, so it is like 10.30ish on Sunday and I'm just here pretty much to wrap up this vlog. I've been doing candle stuff all day. I've packed 12 orders. Sorry, I've got, I've got butter on my face. And I've made 26 candles this evening, I think. Still got loads to do. I've packed 20 orders this week and I have, I don't think I'm back up to 50, which is good. How many orders do I have? 48 outstanding orders, so we still no, 49. Wow. So still a ways to go with that stuff. Um, I'll just do it slowly and steadily through the week and get through it. I'm not in the best mood right now, as you may be able to tell, because as you guys know, I was up until 2 a.m. on Friday filming that book haul. And then I was up till 3 a.m. last night because as soon as I got back from York, I edited the book haul and then I had to pack some orders. So I did that. I was up until 3 a.m. I even, because you guys know the struggles I'm having with my computer and it taking so long to process, I was like, right, I'm trying to get back to my normal schedule. I want this book haul up on Sunday. So I copied all of the files onto my SD card and gave them to my boyfriend to put on his laptop to process them for me because I knew that the upload process as well would take a long time so if I didn't get it started uploading then the video wouldn't go up today so he sorted that all out on his laptop for me um, and I started the upload process at 10 p.m last night it's a 36 minute video and it was about 10 11 p.m last night when I set this to upload and it has literally just finished uploading. It finished the upload process part maybe 15 minutes ago and it is now 10 to 11. So 24 hours on that video. It's just finished processing and now it's too late to post it because I still need to go through it, proof it all, um, tags, cards, etc. So yeah, I'm annoyed because it's currently taking me, what has this been? three days at least, like a minimum of three days. If I hadn't given those files to my boyfriend to render out the video, it would have taken me four days to bring you one video, which means that I need to be working a week ahead on my upload schedule to get videos up for you in time. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's looking like no weekend videos at the minute. Um, I may have to skew my upload schedule from Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday to Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because I can't, I can't, I just can't do it and it's just really irritating and it's really demotivating and it makes me not want to make videos because of the like, not effort, because obviously I put a lot of effort in anyway, but just the amount of time it takes to upload a video that's outside of my control. So the rendering and the uploading of the video, that's not something that I can change. So I'm spending like an hour filming a video I'm spending, like, providing it's not a vlog and depending on the length of the video, I'm spending an hour and a half to maybe three, four hours editing the video for it then to take 36 hours after that to actually get it onto YouTube. So I'm not feeling too great about that. I'm feeling kind of shit at the minute. Um, just, like I said, it's demotivating. But what can I do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, um, while we're talking about computers, have a look at my crowdfund because I want to be giving you updates just so that we can see where we're up to. Okay, so we are currently on £395 raised so far on my GoFundMe. So thank you guys so much to everyone who has donated. I am eternally grateful. I'm very excited to upgrade my equipment. It will cut down some of this time um, that I'm spending. Well, not even spending, just waiting around really. So yeah, thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who supports me, sends me gifts, or just leaves me comments to be fair, just everyone. Um, yeah, sorry I don't feel great, but um, I'll give you a bit of a reading update. Nothing really to say, but I'm on page 166 of the Mime Order. I actually just stopped. I've just had two pieces of toast and a cup of nighttime tea, and I was reading while I did that, and I stopped to wrap up this vlog so that I can take my reading party to bed because I've been working all day, and I'm tired. So I'm going to go to bed. 
I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. Sorry it's ended on such a crappy note, but I hope you enjoyed the rest of this vlog if you made it this far. I'm not sure how long this week's vlog is. I'll be interested to find out because I think it's shorter than usual. But that is it for this week's reading vlog. Please don't forget to like this vlog if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna. And I will see you guys next week. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you're a go when nobody knows. With guns in under our petticoats. We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no.